This is Twit. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Very well. So excited to talk to you. Love the program. Thank you. I'm glad you listen. Yes. Uh, Leo, I have a question I've been wanting to ask you for years now. For about the past 35 years, I have collected um, all kinds of short stories. It originally became, was a kind of a religious thing. And anyway, I, cause I wanted to keep these stories and uh, documents and speeches. It's now grown into recipes, photographs, any kind of article. And I've got them all filed right now manually in files. I have thousands of documents. What I would like to do, because I'm constantly now that people know that I've done this, are asking me if they can if they can borrow them or, or access them. And I'm trying to figure out what the very best kind of online library I could I could I could tap into either Dropbox or something like that that would be the most resourceful for them that would help them so that someone in you know New York can just a brother-in-law can say hey w w this subject what have you what have you got on it and he this is just, this is what the internet was made to do you know that right I understand that, but I'm trying to find <laughs> so are example. they all yeah I'll help you are they all digital now already or are they someone not yet I'm not gonna yet. have to scan them so yeah the first thing you want to do is scan them and. Uh, what you should understand about scanning is that really all you're doing is taking a picture of it. It's right. it's it's physically no different than to pointing a camera at it and taking a picture. Uh, so the scanning result is going to be an image file. It could be an uncompressed TIFF, could be a JPEG, but it's going to be an image file. Mm -hmm. Most of most value, of course, to you and uh, your readers would be something that turns it into actual text. But then we call that optical character recognition or OCR. It's challenging, especially if these are old newspaper articles, things like that. The print's tiny. The, the fonts are non-standard. It can be very difficult to OCR these. Okay. Um, it, the other advantage of turning it into text is text is much more compact. A, a, a full-page JPEG uh, might be, oh, I don't know, uh, 10 kilobytes, 10,000 bytes of data. But the actual text itself might be a few hundred bytes of data mm -hmm. or a thousand bytes of data, be much, much smaller, and then would be further compressible. So the stuff that's already digitized as text is going to be a snap. It's the images that are going to start to take up a lot of space. It's also harder to search because what do you search for? All you have is the title. Um, if you can OCR it, I would, even if it's imperfect, because then at least... Some of the text in the body will be searchable. You probably will still want to serve up a picture because that's the actual text. And a human eye is so much better at deciphering the page than the computer machinery is. Um, but it might be helpful to partially OCR it as you scan it. That way you'll have some extra keywords in the search. Um, the next thing is, well, where do we store these? And remember, what a web that's basically what a website is. Right. A website is an interface that you can, on your computer, go out into the Internet, go to a specific location on the Internet, and summon up a page. Often that page, the home page of that site, will be an index to contents in that site, might have a search, and you click, and as you click, you dig deeper in and you find the thing you want. That's exactly what a web page does. Hmm. Your, what you want is a web page. Web page. Yeah, and and uh, what you want to do is t is now this is going to take a little more extra effort on your part because, and I, I don't know, I mean, did you just imagine that you would send people the uh, link to the file, or did you want them to be able to go on their own to get it? I want them to be able to go on their own. See, like for example, um, if someone calls and says, "What information do you have on courage?" So what I've got That's is great. I've got three hundred articles that talk about courage with a little explanation, and I filed them. Say uh, the file number is like AA twenty three, and so they can pull that up, and it gives a little explanation of what aspect of courage that is about. That's a marvelous resource. Now there might be copyright issues because if some of these things are articles that are copyrighted or owned by somebody else, so you might want to make it a private website. And tell Google, don't look at this, don't index this. This is just for my, and this is would be legal. This is my my own use to lend to friends and family. But you want to make it easier for friends and family to find this stuff. And you might make a front page that says, hey, here's some of the popular topics: courage, 
faith, honor, whatever those things are. Uh, and they could click that link and then see a list of articles in that realm. Um, over time, you might spend some more time. You obviously have devoted a lot of your time to this. You might spend more time kind of fleshing that out with descriptions and, and curating it. And here's a special, our special collection of the week, that kind of thing. And a web page is very well suited to doing that. And you'll store all those documents either on the web page. You could use Google for this, Google Drive and Google Docs. Uh, once you scan them, if you scan them to PDFs, which is just a special kind of picture format, by the way, right? Uh, portable document format, Google will not only allow friends and family to read the PDF, it will do some of the OCR for you in the background, which might be helpful. Hmm. Um, uh, so I think maybe scan them to Google Docs. Leave the, You're not going to have a huge amount of traffic, I don't think. No. No. Uh, Google Drive is very affordable storage. Uh, I don't think you're going to, I don't know how many documents you have, but we're probably not talking more than 10 gigabytes of storage. That would be a huge amount of data. The Library of Congress is about seven terabytes for reference. No, I'm way under that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little bit under that. Uh, so that would be a, a way to do it. Uh, put it on Google Drive. Initially, Pete, you could just share the, the doc from Google Drive or even share. A section of Google Drive. You could put it. Google Drive allows you to organize them in folders. So scanning a Google Drive. And by the way, I have a uh, Epson uh, Workforce Pro scanner. One of the options is not scan to my computer, but scan it to Google Drive. It just uploads it, uploads it, really? uploads it. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it? With okay. the so if you had a document feeder, uh, you said scan all this stuff to Google Drive, and you could go have a cup of coffee while it was just you know working through that stuff but when i when i scan that i still have to input into the google drive in other words put an explanation on or something or well initially we'll have just a numeric file name this is document right. 43 document 44 document 45 so you will then need to go back in you're going to do a little more curation you, right but there's no way around it you'd be doing it anyway which, which i'm fine with you yeah know. so you're you the, from what i am understanding you're because I was leaning towards Dropbox, but now you're pushing me towards... I would go... This is what I would do. I would get create a, a blog at Blogspot. That's Google's blogger platform, free. Uh, you can make it private. And, I would, and it will connect very nicely to Google Drive. So you can create that front page. It says, you want to see our documents on Courage? There's the Courage folder on our Google Drive. They click okay. the link... There they are. They see all the documents. They can download them. They can read them online. They can even do some OCR if they want to try to get the text out of it. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. That's very helpful. Thank yeah. You. What a great project. I'm glad to help you uh, get it going. No, yeah, well, thank you so much. Yeah, Appreciate take care. it, Leo. It's nice. This is what the net, to me, this is what makes the internet so useful. We all have areas of expertise. We have pictures that only we have or audio recordings, whatever it is that you're passionate about. Create a web page. The free and open transfer of information on the Internet is amazing. And what makes it powerful are the vast numbers of public web pages that people have just put up, like ours, techguylabs.com, for you to peruse. Um, that is hugely transformative. Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy.